My name is Seti and welcome back to another Tips and Tricks with Apps Events and Acer. In today's video, we're going to be going into Google Classroom and I'm going to give you some top tips that will help you set up your classroom ready for the new school year, Fall 2020. So first things first, let's open up our browser and let's go to classroom.google.com. Now you can also find Classroom by going to the nine dots in the top right corner and then finding Classroom there. If you still don't see it, Click on more and then you'll find Classroom in that menu in the top right corner. Now, once you're on Google Classroom, there are two different ways that you can start using Google Classroom. You can either create a classroom or you can join a classroom. Today, we'll be creating a classroom as a teacher and then inviting some users as students. So let's go ahead and click on that plus icon in the top right corner and select create a class. We're now asked for a title or a name for this class. And it's very important that you have a think about this and that you also discuss this with colleagues because what you want to do is you want to make sure that your classrooms make sense and that as a group you decide, are we going to be using classrooms, different classrooms for different subjects or do we want all teachers in a single classroom working collaboratively with our students? Now here I'm going to use a demo class. I'm going to say a demo year three. There we go. Now this section, you can leave this blank or you can add that information if you choose to. I'm going to leave this blank and then the subject, I'll just add all subjects. Now again, you can fill this out to match whatever works best for your students and your school. I'm going to click on create and then this classroom is being created. Now, why does it take a little bit of time to create a classroom? Well, that's because two additional things are created. A drive space, which will store and house all the files. And then it also creates a space on the calendar, the Google Calendar. Now you can find those within Google Classroom. Now you'll see at the top, we have four tabs. The first is our stream. This is where communication takes place and all the latest updates will be visible to your students. You can leave little announcements on that stream page and these do not necessarily become part of their drive or their calendar because they're not assignments. So this is great for a little, let's say, remember your swimming outfits for tomorrow or remember that book that you had to bring in the following day. So stream can be incredibly useful for announcements. The second tab is class work. This is where you set assignments and where you share materials. You as a teacher will be spending a lot of time in the classwork page because as soon as you click on that create button right there, you'll see that you can add a number of different teaching resources. So you can add assignments where you can give an assignment a due date. We'll have follow up videos on that as well. We can have a quiz assignment, which is a different type of assignment. You can pose a question to your class group or you can share a material. Now that material will be something that is hosted on Google Drive and then you can share it with your students so that they get access to that file. In addition to that, you can reuse posts and you can reuse posts from within your classroom or from one of the other classes where you are a co-teacher. Remember, archived classes, you can also reuse posts from archived classes. So if you have a class from last year that was archived, well, as long as you are a co-teacher, you can reuse posts from that classroom. And then you can add a topic. Now, I would highly recommend that before you use your classroom, before you do anything, you add your topics. Now, think carefully about how you're going to use topics and also consider what works best for your students. Maybe a topic could be week one, week two, week three. Alternatively, you actually use the subjects that you will be teaching within this classroom. So you can have a separate topic for the maths lessons and then you can have a topic for the English lessons, a topic for design lessons. Adding those right from the start before you're even inviting co-teachers or any of these students will save you a lot of hassle further down the line because everything will be structured neatly and it also helps you to think about how you're going to be using Google Classroom. So let's go ahead and add three topics right now. We're going to add a maths topic. So I'm going to add the maths topic. I'm going to repeat the same steps. So I'm going to go to create topic. I'm going to add English I'm going to add that as well. And now we're going to create a third one, which is going to be design. So let's go ahead and add design. As you can see down the left hand side, we now have three topics and this will also help your students to 
quickly find the relevant assignments and materials that you've shared on Google Classroom. Now again, what works for my students will be different from what works for your students. So if you are using a Google Classroom for a single subject, then maybe the weeks or the different months will be more relevant in regards to using these topics. Now, once you've done that, it's time to move on to the People's tab. And this is where we can now invite our students. In addition to that, we can also invite co-teachers. So if you click on the Add symbol here, you can invite your co-teachers, you can add them to that classroom, and then they become fellow teachers. We can also add our students by clicking on the plus icon down here and then adding our students. In addition to this, we have a new update for Google Classroom, and that is that we can now send them an invitation link as well. You'll see that here at the top, we can copy this, send it to their inboxes or share it on your LMS, and then using that link, they will join your classroom. This makes for a great starter activity at the beginning of the school year. I'm going to cancel this right now, and then we're going to go on to the Marks tab. Now the Marks tab, this is where you're going to have an overview of all the awarded or assigned grades to your students after having been assigned assessments or assignments. Now using the Marks tab can be incredibly useful to get an overview of who's regularly submitting work and who is not submitting the work or not achieving the grades and therefore needs a little bit more feedback. So now let's go to that stream and let's create an announcement. I'm going to share something here with my class. I'm going to say welcome to the new school year. This is set to be a simple announcement. However, I can add attachments. Now what I can't do with announcements is I can't add a topic to this. So that means that it just goes into the stream, everyone sees it, but after a while they will lose track of this. So make sure that you use these for short announcements or anything that's relevant to a short period of time. You can, however, add attachments to this by simply clicking on this add symbol down here. This allows you to add a little video, a link, or even a file hosted on your Google Drive. You can also schedule these out. So if you're planning your week and you'd like to set a couple of announcements or reminders, you can schedule these ahead of time and then also save drafts to go back to it later. This is incredibly useful, especially for reminders when you need to remind your students about bringing things to the classroom. Now let's go ahead and post this. And as you can see here, it appears in that stream and this is also how our students are going to see it. They can respond to it, leave a comment, and then I can comment back. Now let's have a look at the assignments and sharing materials in the Classwork tab, and then you'll see the difference between an announcement and an assignment. So let's go ahead and open up the Classwork tab, create a new material. Now this time I'm going to share a material which is very similar to that announcement because I can add from my Google Drive or I can add a YouTube video right there and I'm going to give it a title. So I'm going to say start of the year and then give it a description, welcome back. Now, different from the announcements, I also have that topic. So I'm going to add this to the design class. This will automatically sort it for my students and it will make it much easier for them to then find this relevant assignment or this relevant material shared. I can also choose to only send it to a single student great for differentiation, or I can send it to different classrooms all at the same time. So if you're teaching year six, seven, eight, you can send the same welcome message to all classes all at the same time. We're going to leave it as it is. I'm going to add a material here. I'm going to just select a random video from YouTube. So let's do a quick search for apps events. There we go. We have our summer summit. So let's go ahead and add that. There we go. It's a three hour and a half of video. I highly recommend that you watch it. They are on this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you click on that button right now and then carry on with the video. We're going to post this and then this too will appear in our stream. So now in our stream, you'll see here we have an announcement at the bottom, welcome to the new school year. But then we also have this material shared. We can also go to the classwork page. As you can see here, we do not see that announcement, but we do see that under design, we have that start of the year. If I was to click on English, then I only see my English lessons. I do not see any of the other lessons. So I can go to all topics or design, and then I see that video right there. Again, there are class comments, students can comment, and they can also submit work when they've done assignments. 
that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be diving a little bit deeper into some of the things that are possible within Google Classroom. Now make sure you leave a comment to let us know what would you like to do on Google Classroom? What is something that you're struggling with? And how are you using Google Classroom this school year? I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure that you leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel. This was another Tips and Tricks with Apps Events and Acer, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.